but were there ever periods of time where you thought that you may never play soccer again? Or at least maybe not to that extreme level, but maybe not to the level that you were, that you wanted to be at. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think it's funny because once it happened and once I was told that I tore my ACL, I initially was like, I'm not getting the surgery. It's been a very long time since I've done a podcast, um, but I wanted to take this opportunity to interview one of my former athletes, Claire Constant. Um, I'll let her share her story and sort of why I decided to do this. It's a very unique situation. Um, so I'll let Claire share a little bit about her background, sort of how she got hurt, and then we'll sort of dive into some of the questions that you, that you guys asked. Um, so Claire, take it away. Yeah, hi guys, I'm Claire. <laughs> uh, thanks for the nice introduction. Um, yeah, so I played uh, soccer at UVA, the University of Virginia, for four and a half years. Um, and then after that, I went straight to Portugal and played professionally for six months. Um, and in that last week of playing in Portugal, I took a step in practice, not a cut, <laughs> nothing like that. I just took a little, a little step and uh, my knee shifted in two different directions and I fell to the ground. Um, I kind of knew, I mean, non-contact knee injury, it was probably something serious, but I'd never done anything like that in my life, obviously. And um, I got carried off the field um, and it was, did the ACL test <laughs> in the, in the um, locker room and was told that it wasn't my ACL. It was probably just my meniscus. Um, and then later that afternoon, I went back to see my athletic trainer and she told me that it was actually my LCL and it was going to be just four weeks of rehab um, and I was supposed to play in the World Cup with the Haitian women's national team uh, two months after that. So for me, as long as it wasn't ACL, as long as I could rehab it and get back before then, I was happy with any result. Um, so I called my mom, called everyone I knew and said I was going to be fine, just four weeks of rehab. I booked my flight home because I knew that the uh, resources there weren't as good as I could get here. So um, as soon as the season ended, a week later, I booked my flight home. And the first person I came to see was Wesley, um, because I know he's an expert. Um, and almost instantly, he did the ACL test when I got here. Uh, almost instantly, he was like, it's your ACL. And I think he could see the pure shock in my face, because I was told it quite literally was not my ACL. Um, but my knee was buckling as I was walking and a friend had actually said that was a pretty telltale sign that that's your ACL. But um, once again, I was told it wasn't my ACL and I could run, I could jump, I could dance, I could do almost anything I was doing before. So um, in my head, I'd really convinced myself that it wasn't my ACL, but sure enough, it was. <laughs> um, and that was part of the reason why I wanted to do this, uh, just because it is very unique at least again in, in our areas, it may be different across different areas of the world or the country. Um, we're not usually the ones who are the primary diagnosers of ACL tears, you know, either potentially as a trainer or usually if they get hurt on the field, court, whatever it may be, they go to see an ortho, MRI, confirmed ACL tear, then you go see a physical therapist after that. That's 95 plus percent of the people that we see. In Claire's situation, we had a previous relationship. I worked with her for a soft tissue injury in college for a little bit and I had a great, I have a great relationship with her. Um, strength coach of Adis, who really wanted her to get in to see, uh, to, to, to see me. When I did the test, again, it's not, it's not something I do very often, but I did the test and I was like, well, this definitely feels lax. And obviously you compare it to the other side, you asked, I asked Claire how she felt and she was like, it does feel different. So immediately we started calling around to different doctors in the area and thankfully she was, I think you were to get in that day, something like that, or the yeah, next day. Yeah. Got the MRI, confirmed ACL tear. And I remember her, she sent me the text and I was just like, I felt crushed because I know how hard Claire works and I know that she also played a very big role into helping Haiti get to their first ever World Cup, um, which is insane that she was a big part of that, you know, because of, again, who she is as an athlete. And I was the one who had to give her that news that she was the one who couldn't play in it, um, which is obviously devastating. Um, and that sort of leads me to um, the first question is, um, what or second question i guess but what was the most difficult part of the rehab process again i, I know that there's we've been together for about a year now um, but i guess what moments stick out in your head 
about what was very difficult? Um, my first thought when asked that question would be, you kind of almost learn to like walk again, um, which is not something you really expect um, or that you think is going to be, because you know at the end of the ACL, at the end of the ACL process, you're going to be running, you're going to be hopefully playing again, um, especially when you've watched other people do it as you've grown up. Um, but when you're actually in it and you are laying in bed and you literally, and especially because I did my meniscus as well, you literally are just laying there for what, like six to eight weeks um, and your sister has to help you shower and you know, you help getting out of bed and getting food. It's really insane to kind of process each day. Um, and then I would say also just mentally, like you have to choose that you want to get better every single day, um, especially because I wasn't part of a team when I did this, which I also think is pretty unique given where I'm at in my life. Um, typically, you're a part of a team, you go, um, there's someone kind of holding you accountable to be there every day. Um, but for me, and I'm sure a lot of other people, uh, that wasn't the case. I had to choose to come here every day and choose to get better every single day. So I think mentally it's something that um, is a struggle. Uh, and I think you know that goes for everyone, no matter your situation with the ACL, it's gonna be a struggle, um, but yeah. And somebody asked the question online, but were there ever periods, again, this took roughly about a year, but were there ever periods of time where you thought that you may never play soccer again? Or at least maybe not to that extreme level, but maybe not to the level that you were, that you wanted to be at. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think it's funny because once it happened and once I was told that I tore my ACL, I initially was like, I'm not getting the surgery. Um, I had decided, and mostly laughs now, but it was like, I was dead serious. I was like, I'm not getting the surgery. I'm not doing this. Like, I'm, I'm done. Um, I initially thought that I couldn't handle this. Um, and I was like, I'm, I'm done with soccer, which is like, it's, it's embarrassing to admit, but um, it was my truth. Like, I did not think I could handle this. Um, and there, of course, were times where, you know, you're doing stuff that you've done a million times in your life. Um, and I remember dribbling outside in my garage and I just like couldn't do like the simple simple cone work. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna have to kind of adjust how I play soccer. Um, and there were so many times where you just kind of think, okay, well, maybe I just will never be able to do that again when you're doing simple things you've done over and over again. Um, but sure enough, we're, we're here today and things are looking, things are looking up. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I, I typically break the rehab process up into sort of five segments, right? You have the early, early, mid, mid, mid to late, and late. When you sort of think about that, the five stages that we went through, is there one that you stuck out of like that shift where you're like, oh, like I'm starting to feel like Claire again. And obviously like shake the rust off and we still had strengthening to go and things like that. But like out of those five, was there a period or when did things start to click of being like, okay, I can do this. I'm, I'm more towards the finish line than I'm not towards the finish line. I think I would say towards the later stage. Um, I feel like the mid stage, there were so many ups and downs. Um, <laughs> but towards the later stage, there were still ups and downs, but I was seeing myself get stronger. I was seeing myself get quicker. Um, and even though sometimes the progression would be very, very small, I knew that I'd worked this hard and come this far. Um, and I was like, okay, I, I'm gonna be myself again and I'm gonna be even better because I'm handling all these ups and downs. Uh, is there an up and down that stuck out to you? Oh, definitely. Um, I would first say there are two. One was running. Um, I started jogging and then there was a point where I had stopped. I couldn't jog anymore because I was feeling some pain in the front of my knee. And Wesley was like, we're going to take a break. And I, you know, it was, it was hard to do that when you've, you know, been doing this for six months or however long I was at that point. Um, and to say that you're going to take a break is, is hard to digest. But sure enough, took a break, came back, just jogging again. And then when you're testing, um, there was a one test that I was just having a hard time passing. Um, and that was definitely hard for me um, to just continue. I would just try again, try and try and try again. And uh, it was hard. It wasn't passing it. But um, we did. <laughs> Uh, and for those wondering, the R, we have a leg X machine, which allows us to test uh, concentric quad strength, which is very unique because a lot of places don't have the ability to do that. Uh, that is the hardest one to pass. Claire passed the ISO one months ago, probably at least two months ago, two and a half months ago. But it was a concentric quad strength that took her a while to overcome, um, but sort of stuck with it, just kept her head down, just kept working at it, working at it and sort of tracking numbers along the way. We were testing her every three weeks or so, two or three weeks, um, just tracking her numbers. And I remember 
um, we'll get into this more, but like giving Claire a lot of bad news of like, oh, you're at 85%, 87%, 88%. Um, and there's some other stuff with Claire's career that we'll talk about too. Um, but I, I told her from the beginning, and I told her, all of my ACLs at the beginning that I have a very strict line that I, that I won't clear people. You know, I have to clear people you above 90%, ideally even close to 95%, just because we know that that's what research supports. You know, I will never clear anyone below 90% just because I'm not, I don't want to put them at risk. Do people, do some of my patients in the past do that? Of course, it's their right to do so, it's their health. But I need to give them the facts, and the facts are that Claire wasn't ready at that time. But thankfully, she was willing to um, wait a little bit in order to get, get cleared. Thank you for watching today's video. Please feel free to like and subscribe. I have started an ACL Mastermind Group, which is a program designed for physical therapists, physios, strength coaches, students, and athletic trainers who want to learn more about ACL rehab. It currently holds over 600 videos and has over 500 members with new videos added every single month. The videos cover immediate post-op to late stage sports genetic movements and everything in between. Content specifically also includes rehab complications, treatment philosophies, case studies where you can see my real life patients, movement assessments, exercise breakdowns so you understand how to properly teach the exercises. The exercises are also arranged by difficulty level for strengthening exercises, plyometrics, balance, and neuromuscular control. Of course, it also covers late stage for movement exercises from structured all the way to randomized and chaotic to mimic more sports related settings. And lastly, you also learn how to do return to sport testing, which is extremely important. And this would ultimately determines whether or not someone is safe or not safe to return to sports again. There's also questions within the, within the group where you can learn how I engage with patients and their parents of how to answer difficult questions throughout the rehab process, which is inevitably come up. And lastly, you gain access to a private forum where you can ask questions directly to me and others within the community. We share research articles, we share other equipment and beneficial equipment and things like that. Anything that can come up within the ACR rehab spectrum, that's where you can ask within the, within the private forum. Uh, and lastly, you can also download the app where you can gain access in your respective facilities directly on your phones. Uh, if you have any interest, please feel free to click the link below and I appreciate you watching today's video.